This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar exploring how to integrate Apple Motion 5.3 with Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to create a title template in Motion that can be used in Final Cut. As always, we select what our presets are going to be, and these can change. How you change these has no effect on the template that you're creating. And notice that I've got a 10-second duration. That means that the title that I create will export to Final Cut with a 10-second duration, and we'll click Open. Because I don't need the timing pane, we'll press F6 and hide it. Shift Z so we can scale what we have to work with inside the viewer window. And you'll notice that I have the safe zones turned on. The main reason is just so we can see what the window is, especially when everything goes to black. But you can turn them on and off at any time by pressing the apostrophe key or going up to the view menu and turning off safe zones. Again, like I said, I'll leave them on simply for a display. There's two elements here editable text which would show up as it's formatted inside Final Cut and a background it's a placeholder what the title background is 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 it's a special object in motion that says whatever video is below the title will be imported into this and display underneath the title it becomes essentially transparent we could if we wanted to select this and manipulate it in terms of scale and position so that as we go to the title maybe the text is on the left hand side the picture is on the right this is an object which we can add behaviors to or filters to or any other things that we want we can even keyframe it all of that stuff is possible but in this case I want to talk about the process of formatting the text notice that both the text and the title are in the same group well, what I want to do is I want to have the person's name, a person's title, some animation behind the text but above the background. That means I need to create at least two more groups. So we'll just right or control click inside the layers panel, set this to new group, and I'm going to call this text. You don't have to rename it. Renaming it is totally arbitrary, but I like renaming it so I know what I'm working with. I'm going to grab the text clip and drag it up. So now I've got a group, a folder that contains the text, another group or folder that contains the background. I'll just relabel this background. And I want to create a third group. And remember, stacking order affects what's foreground, midground, and background. I want it to go below the text, but above the background. So there's my text. There's my midground. And there's the background. Well, I don't need to change the background. I just want that placeholder to be left alone. But let's start with styling our text. When we create, oops, sorry, select our text. Notice that the text goes the entire width of the screen. This is a special format which makes it almost impossible if I were to add a title below here. I'd be able to select this top text but not the bottom text. I have to change this layout. So select the text, go to the inspector, go to layout, and notice the layout method is set to paragraph. I need it set to type. Now just the text itself is selected. If it's set to paragraph, I would be unable to select, say, a title that I place below the person's name. So I know what I'm supposed to do with this text. I'm going to double-click it, enter name here. That reminds me of what I'm supposed to do. Press the return key. If I grab it and drag it, I can move it wherever I want. But an easier way is to hold the command key down. If you hold the command key down and type the up arrow, or down arrow, or left arrow, or right arrow, I can move it under arrow control rather than by dragging it. If I hold the shift key down and the command key, I move it in bigger increments. In this case, I just want to shift command, arrow it up, so I've got room for another piece of text underneath here, and we'll call this title. We'll call it that, but what I type amazes me every time. I'm going to grab this from the center, drag it over, park it right on, title safe, click here, pull this down just a bit, select our text, pull it down. Now our text moved down to the background because that was the group I had selected. I'm going to drag it up and put it right below the name, and now click on the name. So all of my text is in a single spot. Here's a neat trick. If I select both the name and the title, notice they're both selected, go over to Format, 
I could change both their formats, both the fonts, say I want to have it be Georgia or Gil Sands, I can select multiple clips and change them both at the same time. I can also go to Appearance, scroll to the bottom of Appearance, and add a drop shadow. Any text that is added to video should have a drop shadow. My favorite opacity is between 90 and 95 percent, so I make the drop shadow clear enough that we can actually read it. Title needs to be a different color and a different size. Let's go to Format. We'll set the size to, say, 38. Let's make it 40 points. And we'll make the color, go to Appearance, Face, click in this color chip, and let's set it to oh, a nice yellow, right about in there. Okay, so I don't need to format the text. I'm just showing you that I can. Highlight it here, Command, Up Arrow, so it sits right on Title Safe. Now let's add some animation. One of the things I've really enjoyed over putting the series together is discovering all the cool things that are inside replicators. So let's go to library. Let's go to replicators. And you see we've got all these choices. Look under lower thirds. We'll just pull this up. And I've got all these wonderful lower third options. Well, let's select retro. Because the group is selected, click apply. We'll drag this down. Make sure it's centered. Centered. There we go. And hold the option key down. Drag it the width here a little bit lower, a little bit higher, and we'll select the group, show the HUD, and just make it a little bit translucent. We'll just adjust the opacity so we see a little bit of the background shining through. As we play this, we've got this nice animated replicator underneath my text but above the background. And now how do we get it to Final Cut? It's easy. You go File, Save. And let's, I've created a new category called Larry for all the stuff that I create. It's not required, but it's nice. Helps me find it. We'll call this our lower third blue and publish it. Switch over to Final Cut. And let's put this over something where it's going to be really obvious. Let's show our titles. There's Larry. There's the lower third blue. We'll just add that spacebar. Hang on, it's got to get it loaded. Took a second. Try that again. Look at that. A little bit of translucency so we can see the trees. We've got the bright blue. It stays inside Action Safe and Title Safe. And then if I double click the name, Command A, type Larry, double click the title, Teacher, and look at that. Exactly the way we want it. Except maybe I want this to be a little less bright. So let's right mouse click directly on the title, open it in motion. Let's click on our mid group, show the HUD, make it more transparent. Save it. Go back to Final Cut. Now here, anything that I've added to the timeline is never changed. So if I've modified it in motion, I got to get rid of the version that I've got. Then click off the browser bring back the browser. This forces it to reread all the files. There's our lower third. Click it and right there. Notice it's now much more transparent. In order for me to have it read the new version, as opposed to remember what it's cached in memory, just go somewhere else and come back to that browser and it will automatically go back to your hard disk, see what's new, and reload the new version. Really, really cool. Let's say that I didn't want to change this. Let's say, let's open this in motion. Enter name here. Let's select our text. And double click it. This text does not change. Maybe it's a header across the top that says today's calendar or, or whatever specific text that you want to have it not be editable. With that text selected, go to the inspector. Go to Format and go all the way to the bottom, and notice this checkbox, Editable and Final Cut. When that's unchecked, I'm not able to edit the text. I'll be able to do this one, because notice the title is checked as editable, but Type here, where it says this text does not change, is not. Save it, switch to Final Cut, again go off the browser, come back to the browser, get rid of this, pull this back again, 
and I can't click that text. I'm double clicking, but nothing happens. Down here, I can, but not the top. This is an easy way to lock text so that an editor can't change that which should remain left alone, but can change that which needs to be changed. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at integrating Apple Motion 5.3 with Apple Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 219. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 1,600 movies, hundreds of hours, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.